Number nine, believing in your superpower with Ryan Lovat. The acceleration of disruptive technology has created changes in the way we communicate, making it essential to know how to be effective. There are a few places where we can learn the new trends in communication while developing fellowship through collaboration and improving leadership while volunteering. If you want to navigate through this new normal stage in our society, this show is for you. With your host, Luchi Bedi and Olivic Soho. Welcome, Ryan. In today's episode, we are talking to Ryan Lovett. Ryan has been an active member of Liquid Masters Club for more than a for more than one year and currently volunteering as the club treasurer and keeping track of all the accounts. He's an enthusiastic technologist with a passion for electronic gadgets, a just for solving complex problems and is constantly exploring ways to improve and expand upon his skill sets. Welcome Ryan to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me on. Ryan. We know that you're passionate about podcasts and you have your own podcast channel. Would you like to share your experiences and challenges of starting a podcast channel? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, The first experience that I ever really had with the whole thing, I mean, for the past couple of years, I've just been listening to podcasts. Um, And uh, I believe the first podcast that I ever really started to listen to uh, uh, was Smodcast which is a podcast done by the director, Kevin Smith and his friend, Scott Mosier. So they just talk about movies and like their lives and all that stuff. And it's extremely funny. And over the years, I just started to listen to more of uh, the one-on-one interviews and uh, just educational podcasts and uh, uh, with some comedy ones sprinkled in. Um, I think at one point I had about 16 different podcasts on the go, and that included Joe Rogan's, which runs from like two to four hours, depending on who he's talking to. Um, and and th- th- after I think about it, like a year and a half, I just figured like, you know what? I would just really like to do something like this. Um, and it was when uh, my then girlfriend, now wife, we both went to a, uh, uh, we both went to a Tony Robbins thing uh, just mostly out of curiosity and they had a <clears throat> and I believe that they had a seminar where it was talking about doing something with the digital marketplace or something like that and and the man who was hosting it he asked who would want to do something and blah 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 so I stood up in a room and I think there was like maybe like 125 people inside of this room or so. And I just stood up and just explained that, that, that I would like to do a podcast in lines uh, with uh, uh, with them. Uh, uh, with Sam Harris and Joe Rogan, the Rubin Report and all that stuff like that. And, and, and I'm pretty sure that y- 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 your listeners can tell that I have a stutter. So... I, so I, so it was kicked into overdrive and it was just a really nerve wracking experience, but, uh, but, but I had a thunderous applause from the, the, all of the people in the room because they could tell that I was nervous as all hell. Um, so that was the first time that I ever really told somebody about that idea. And then I decided to do uh, my, my science-based show. Uh, which was the Sideshow podcast, uh, where uh, the, the main idea was to be discussing science, current events, and ideas. And the first episode that I did, which I mentioned in, uh, I think, a few of my speeches, it was really, it, it, it was terrible. It just went so wrong. Uh, the uh, the script that I was reading off of uh, just made it sound really stilted and just really, just, just, I. Uh, yeah, uh, it was just really painful to listen to being a podcast listener. And I was just, Oh my God, I wouldn't listen to this. And then, 
uh, the audio was really, really low. So, and then I was learning on the fly with that whole thing. Yes. And then the second interview or the second show for that, I was speaking with the chairman of the Stuttering Institute and it ended that everything was set up perfectly fine. Well, on my end, but I didn't set everything up properly on his end. Yeah. So, so my audio came out really, really clearly and his was all really garbled and really low. So I had to go through the entire show while editing it and making sure his was and making sure his levels were raised and it just turned into a whole thing i had to write down where um how long he spoke and then just go through all that and it was just a re- it was just a real pain uh but that one had to had to slowly go away because it was just getting too frustrating because i was trying to reach out to people to try and interview them and in this realm of gotcha journalism and all that i don't consider myself a journalist but people's words are constantly being misconstrued and all that so people were probably worried that i was going to say something or at least maybe like twist their words even though i had to say many times that no <clears throat> uh no, my show is not like this at all. <laughs> like, I think I tried to contact, uh, uh, I tried contacting Cam H and I wanted to discuss, uh, the science, uh, the science behind, uh, I was trying to figure out, uh, uh, the, 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 the and I think they kind of got a little bit worried that like, you know, something was going to be misconstrued and all that. But it, 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 though I told them like, okay, but you guys will have the final cut. So if there's something that you don't like, you just tell me to take it out and I will. I mean, like there's no, no problems. And, and after I think a couple of months of me trying to get another thing going, it just didn't work out. And then the second one I did a, uh, a movie and pop culture based one, which went strangely well. It went fairly well. Um, but that one also got a little bit frustrating because I was doing too much. It, it, d- despite having a co-host, it was, and, and the, the, I will try and be as nice as possible because I don't want to slag the guy off, but it just got a little too much for me just to do. And, uh, but, but uh, the, the, I, to experiment uh, with different formats. I got to speak to people I didn't think I ever would. So it was just something that was really, really cool. And I've been, I've been thinking about getting back into it uh, within the last couple of months or so. I've been wanting to get back uh, into that, uh, but more so closer to my first podcast uh, show idea. I'm listening to you. It's Mm -hmm. very um, interesting. Your, your, journey and uh um one i one one question that i have in my mind is um <laughs> when you say that you have to set it up for the other person for your uh for your um uh guest what do you mm-hmm. mean with that so how do you set up a podcast for another person that is not in the room oh okay uh well um uh, the original setup that i had it was just me with my laptop so i would physically go to the uh the place to do it because uh back uh because this was i think about uh close to four years ago or like i would say close uh to three years ago when i really started like to think about it so uh th- th- this whole thing of zoom and all that it really wasn't that big of a deal i uh the one long distance episode that i did uh was uh the man was located down in Florida, in Tampa. Uh, So he just did that over Skype. So I guess that was uh, the one thing that was okay. But, but that was also a really funny story. We talked to this guy for about three hours or so, and we got a lot of behind the scenes stuff involved with, uh, uh, with most things related to comic books. Cause the guy was like, he, he's a legend in the field. Who is the guy? If you can um, say. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, his name, uh, was Chuck Dixon. He was the creator of, of the Batman villain Bane, <clears throat> uh, who broke Batman's back in 1993. And I believe that was the first ever Batman story that I ever read. So, uh, so I was eight years old and I was reading 
this story of my hero getting his back broken. So, and it was the first ever story that I kind of read from start to finish. So it was just one of those, like, what the hell am I reading? Like, this is just really, really messed up. Um, and I kind and I accidentally flipped one switch halfway through our show and, and of that three hours, maybe like maybe closer to two hours was completely garbled on his end. And it was one of those like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. I spent weeks setting up this whole thing and then to have that happen. And, uh, and I then sheepishly had to go up to him or ate him. Uh, yeah, Chuck, um, I, I kind of screwed up on this. It, it, is it possible like to do this again? And he was very, very cool with it. He was very, very cool with it. Um, I guess because he, he probably thought that like, we weren't, we weren't pros at this. So uh, I think we rescheduled it for like maybe two weeks later or so. And, and it went off really, really well. We tried, tried to recreate the original energy, but there were just some moments that we just can't get back. So it was just one of those like, Oh my God. I mean, like, uh, like him telling us, you know, uh, how they had like a behind the, scenes meeting uh with how to come up with the next big event because they had uh, yeah because they had batman's back getting broken and then the death death of superman all in the same year and then he's saying that they were uh that he was in a room while they were trying to come up with a different event and it was just like oh my god this, i didn't even know that that was going to be a thing it was just i would have loved to have seen that go forward he's like yeah i did too that's why i was fighting for it and but sadly that the first initial magic was gone I it's love your like enthusiasm. That. Yeah, I love your enthusiasm when you talk about that. I can see that in your face. <laughs> Thank you. It, 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 well, like it, 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 it was just a really cool thing to have, and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I would really like to do something like that again, which I plan on doing over like the next little bit. So, so listening to Ryan, I can say that Ryan, you have a long journey as a podcaster. Uh, we all, when we start new things, we fall down, we have failures along the way, we learn yeah. from them, we improve on them, and then next episode is much better than, you know, what we have in the first episode. Um, moving on to the next question, uh, what motivated you to join the Toastmasters and how did you overcome the challenge of speech difficulty? Well, um... I think what really motivated me was just trying to get rid of this whole thing. And I, and I, um, having this stutter kind of has, I, I would say it has kind of held me back from a couple of things. So, and since I eventually want to start my own thing, uh, business, I would have to have to learn how to be a little more confident, uh, with some things. So, um, so having done the speech therapy and I think I was doing it when I joined you guys as well. So it, so I was, oh, excuse me, I was using Toastmasters as a supplement of sorts to try and test out my, uh, to try and test out my, um, uh, the exercises in a, as close to a real life environment as I possibly could, because when you're doing your speech therapy one on one, on on uh you tend to become a little bit more comfortable with the person so you're so you're a little more relaxed and and it's like yeah and it works but also i find that it could be a little bit not skewed but again like since you're dealing with one person and and you're only trying this stuff with that, that one person all the time uh did that it could kind of skew the results kind of sort of so I think like that's uh, the, 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 that's what really motivated me to do this whole thing and um, and trying to overcome the uh, the stutter has been a lifelong thing. It like it sucks. It really really sucks. Um, and I've and I've had and and I've heard some really hurtful stuff uh, from some people. Some of which I can't even say on here because it was one of those like really what the hell is the matter with you that's just not it's just really not right to say so on that i will say that they are not aware of the speech difficulty and they are not there to support you so even if they're saying hurtful th things i think you have to let them ignore them and move on because 
maybe they don't have awareness about the speech difficulty which is so common and even i have a close friend who was mm-hmm. having the same problem and i can understand that well it, oh yeah it mostly comes from a place of the 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 I know I've been written off by some people uh, by uh, by they probably think that I'm just beyond stupid uh, because I have this and it's one of those like, okay, well, no, one does not equal the other. So, I mean, I've spoken to some people who speak quite fluently and and hearing some of the garbage that's coming out of their mouths. I mean, like, like really? So they're smart, smarter than me? <laughs> so it's like, all right, fine, whatever, whatever. And, and it's just one thing that you have to ignore it. Yes. And so, I mean, like, that's what I would probably have to say to your listeners if they happen to have something like this. Like, you just have to ignore them. Um, but if there is some valid criticism, like, yeah, take it, obviously. But if someone's just being a jackass for the sake of being a jackass, then yes. screw them. Yeah, that's you're it. right. You're right. Uh, uh, not to not to uh, compare with with what you have to deal with, but um, I had a few of your experiences when I um, came here and I started to speak. I learned English by myself. I didn't have time to go to any um, school. And, oh wow, self taught. And I was yeah, and I was very uh, nice. Thank you, Ryan. And I was feeling stupid, and people were nice at all. I remember I have one experience the first time I went to the supermarket to buy something Mm -hmm. and I didn't know even how to ask for. Everybody was laughing at me, the cashier and the people around, like looking at me exactly like that, like I was stupid. (laughs) I understand perfectly. But you know, I think that these experiences uh, taught us something and make us different and, and, you know, stronger, I guess. Mm -hmm. Are you currently involved in any volunteer work besides those masters? Uh, well, when I w- uh, ju- uh, in my last year of schooling, I was involved uh, with, uh, uh, I believe it was called the Makerspace program uh, at the Brampton Library, where I, I would be helping kids um, make stuff involving 3D printers. And, and I think I sat in on one or two of the other ones that just showed kids how to make like, you know, like just very basic calculators out of microchips and all that stuff. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, sorry. I, um, had to stop doing that, uh, uh, because I think it was only open, uh, to students Mm -hmm. and I was not involved for the longest time. So it was, um, uh, but yeah, the, 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 as of right now, I'm not involved with anything. I mean, since we've been having this pandemic and all that, it's really hard to volunteer at some places when you're, when you're not really allowed in anywhere. <laughs> yes. Yes, it, it is. Even, even though you want to do some, something. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan, uh, I just have to say you're an inspiration to so many people who have the same kind of speech difficulty. Even we reach out to you for all the tips and tricks, how we can improve our podcast. Uh, you know, um, another question I want to ask you is, uh, would you like to share something about your passion for building electronic gadgets? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, uh I try and keep a few of these things close to the chest because I've been ripped off once, once or twice. So I'm going to have to play this a little bit carefully. Um, uh, uh, any of the ideas that I've come up with, I've seen a problem that's been going on or that I just hear about and you try and fix it. I mean, like the whole, uh, there's, uh, there's the, quote of uh, of uh i believe it's necessity is the the, the mother of all the, the, the invention so, 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 oh you have to come up with an uh, with a problem that needs fixing and then you go from there um i will say that uh there was um uh the, 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 there was one moment when i was making uh, my first thing in school 
and I accidentally plugged the audio feed directly into the power. And I, I had about 24 volts just come up and just hit me in the ear. Mm-hmm. And I lost my hearing for about a half an hour or a close like to 45 minutes. And I was just getting so much guff from everybody saying like, how can you do something that stupid? I was just one pinhole off. But yeah, like uh, I try and read as much current scientific literature as possible. Uh, 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 and uh, the, 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 there's a few companies that I follow. So it just kind of, so, so like there's a few things that I would see what they're coming up with. And then I don't, I don't rip them off, but I, but, but I could see an idea that they have. I could pass it through a couple of internal filters that I have. And then I would probably come up with something totally, totally different. <laughs> that makes no sense. So it's one of those like, okay, I could probably try and have something involving a speaker of sorts is my final product, but I would get the idea by seeing like a brand new transmission or something just really, really strange. I don't, I don't exactly know how to explain the process, but it's just one of those like, okay, yeah, that's, that's something else. And um, I think you explain, explain it perfectly. So we, we, we got the the idea, the idea. So uh, Ryan, do you have any um, contact information, any social media where people can talk to you about your podcast or your electronics uh, uh, inventions? Or um, well, I I I do have a few social media things. I'm barely I'm like I rare I rarely use it. I used to go on Twitter, not an awful lot, but I used to go on there. And then over the last couple of months, I would just see the dumpster fire that. Uh, that Twitter has become of everybody just screaming at er- at it, everybody. So it's, it's one of those like, you know what? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'm on that. Um, <clears throat> uh, I do have an Instagram page for uh, my next show that's coming up. Um, uh, the working title uh, is tech blog 85. Uh, so if you want to try and find me on that, that's, that's cool. Cool. Um, and then uh, I think uh, my personal one, uh, just search uh, for, uh, just search uh, for uh, uh, R Lovett, L O V A T T, eighty five, and you'll just see my stuff on there. Um, and it, and in like the next couple of weeks, I will be creating a website for my uh, s- blogs. So. Uh, uh, most likely using the exact same name. I haven't. I. I. I didn't. I didn't see. Uh, th- I didn't see the domain name being used. So it's most likely going to be techblog85.com. Um, and yeah, th- th- those are really the only things that I can really think of at the moment. Perfect. So we're gonna um, write it down um, down below on our awesome. podcast with you, uh, so people right. can just ask you the the questions that they have, and I'm pretty sure they have a lot of questions for, for you. And mm-hmm. um, just as Richie said, thank you so much for being here, for taking the time to talk to us. And I know it's not easy. I'm so amazed by everything that you have done so far. Honestly, uh, it's not easy. Thank you. It's not easy. And, um, well, looking forward to make more podcasts with you and probably be an, a guest in yours. <laughs> I don't yeah. know anything about technology, but <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everyone, for being here uh, today, listening to this amazing podcast. And as always, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank okay. you.